gut bugs and hiatal hernia the surprising link research is connecting the fact that you can have an increased risk of hiatal hernia due to an imbalance of bugs bacteria in your colon and this can be exacerbated worsened by a particular drug that maybe many of you are taking it's certainly one of the most commonly drugs prescribed worldwide and we'll go into what the problem is so when we talk about good bugs we're talking about your microbiome which is the 40 to 100 trillion organisms in your colon and that's your large intestine and these are predominantly bacteria and your microbiome not only affects how your digestion functions, but how your immune system functions, hormonal balance. Uh, it, it is very connected to increasing or decreasing, depending on the, the profile of the bacteria, whether you're at more risk for the diseases that we're all trying to avoid, from heart disease and diabetes and dementia and autoimmune disease, not just hiatal hernia. So the fact that hiatal hernia is tied into this is really quite interesting. So uh, there's a few different mechanisms involved where uh, there's gas production, motility or motion changes, pressure changes, and inflammation. So a uh, dysbiosis, which is the word used for this imbalance of good bacteria and bad bacteria, causes gas and bloating and increased intra-abdominal pressure. Intra-abdominal pressure just means the pressure within your abdomen. And what happens is that uh, these organisms are unhealthy, they're inhospitable, and um, gas is created due to their uh, fermentation of carbohydrates so it's interesting how the bad guys love simple sugars you know they love the they love the ultra processed food and the over processed food and the sugars and the simple carbs and um, they thrive on that but they do not have your best interests at heart so that's problematic but they they create gas they slow down the motion of your colon, so you're more likely to have constipation. And between just that slowing and the increased gas, you're going to increase that pressure in your abdomen. So where that then connects to hiatal hernia is that pressure up does not allow your uh, diaphragm to move downward as easily as it should, and it gets a bit spasmed. Also, that pressure, increased pressure in your abdomen, puts pressure on your stomach. And that can be the beginning of acid reflux because um, we're not supposed to have that amount of pressure on our stomach. And the stomach is a bag of acid. It's supposed to contain acid. That's its job. Uh, but you put excess pressure on it and it has no choice but to bring its contents upward. That's acid going up into your esophagus and then that's creating acid reflux, and we'll get to the medication problem in, in just a moment. So um, the dysbiosis, this imbalance again of the bacteria, also aggravates your vagus nerve. So there's a nerve component here that's very important to understand um, because the vagus nerve, our longest cranial nerve, goes to all our digestive organs in addition to the heart and the diaphragm. Uh, which are integrally part of hiatal hernia syndrome, it's called, meaning that people with a hiatal hernia, even if it's a very small hiatal hernia, can also suffer from shortness of breath and heart palpitations. So you're starting to sort of see the whole picture and this vague nerve, vagus nerve irritation is part of it. And when the vagus nerve gets irritated because of these inhospitable bacteria, a number of different things occur. One is that the tone or optimal function of certain sphincters, you can think of them as valves or even doors in your digestive tract are not working the way they should. And in the esophagus, this is very key to hiatal hernia because um, these sphincters open when food or drink is passing down the esophagus. You have two, an upper one and a lower one. And they, they sense that food and drink is coming, they open, and then once it's passed, they close, but they also close with a nice downward pressure. And, and that pressure gradient is very important because that is the flow of digestion, top down, never the reverse. And of course, acid reflux is the reverse. Your stomach moving upward into your chest cavity is, is the reverse mechanically. So the vagus nerve, when it gets irritated, 
from these bad bacteria. Now these um, these sphincters are not as they're not as toned, and you can just think about it as having a, a well-toned muscle, and they're not responding as well. They're not closing with that nice downward pressure, and they're kind of loose and floppy, like an untoned muscle. And then what does that allow? That allows um, acid to come up, the stomach to come up, because your body is incredible in that it has an anti-reflux barrier times three. So this lower sphincter. Uh, or valve in the esophagus acts as one. And then you have the diaphragm itself has a crura, a circle of muscle that acts as another, uh, it's called a pinch cock system. And a pinch cock is just something that pinches um, a flexible tube. So that's what the esophagus is, it's a, it's a flexible tube. And so when you inhale and that diaphragm goes down, it just naturally pinches the esophagus. It's all about creating downward pressure, not letting anything come back up and um, ensuring that uh, food and drink is going one way and, and acid or, and or bile or food is not going back the other way. And then you also have uh, a valve where the, the esophagus meets the stomach. So it's a, it's a triple protection that we have inherently of how our body is preventing reflux and thereby also preventing hiatal hernia because it starts with the reflux of the fluid coming up, but then as it continues, then the stomach comes up and that's the definition of a hiatal hernia. And all of this has at its root one of its major roots, this imbalance in your, in your colon. And then, as I said, the vagus nerve gets affected as well. Okay, so um, the risk factors, yes, there's, there's bloating and there's constipation. Um, obesity is another risk factor for a hiatal hernia. And sure enough, when you have dysbiosis, you're more likely to be um, obese. And you can say it in reverse. People who are obese don't tend to have the healthiest microbiome. So again, it's all, it's all tying together. So uh, one of the major medications used when you have acid reflux, they're called PPIs or proton pump inhibitors. And these medications, yes, they decrease the amount of acid in your stomach, which we could argue is problematic because it's not that you don't have it's not that you have too much acid. Your, your stomach is just being inappropriately squeezed by that pressure and bringing its contents up into your esophagus. The contents of the stomach are supposed to be acidic. And that's why this medication, PPIs, they're, they're really, not really, they are only approved for two weeks of use, two weeks. Uh, by the Food and Drug Administration. And if you're hearing this right now, you might say two weeks, my gosh, not only has it been, <laughs> been more than two months, it's, it's been more than two years. Maybe for some people we run into, it's been more than two decades. And you've been on this medication that is known to cause in, infections and weakened bones and dementia and heart attack risk and stomach cancer risk. And guess what? It imbalances the microbiome, what we've been talking about. So you're put on a medication to handle symptoms of acid reflux that imbalances your microbiome, and an imbalanced microbiome is a root cause of hiatal hernia and therefore worsening of acid reflux because everything's getting pushed upwards. So this, this is a cause of concern, but don't worry that there's not uh, an answer because I, I understand you can be you know, listening to this and saying, well, great, I have terrible reflux if I don't take this drug. And then if I take this drug, now I'm making the problem even worse. There, there is a plan C, <laughs> you know, there is, a, there is an alternative here. And that is to get to the root cause of why the pressure is there, why it's uh, compressing your stomach, why the vagus nerve is irritated. And when we sort of tease out these various root causes and handle them, then we, we don't have the need for the PPI. Maybe you've been diagnosed with Barrett's esophagus. I just did a video on that. I suggest you look at it. Hopefully we'll have the link in the description um, because you can be terrified of getting off a PPI if you have Barrett's esophagus, and I understand. What I'm recommending are very uh, proven methodologies that are safe, proven by research. So. Uh, but, but it's all about getting to the root cause and not just managing symptoms with a medication 
most especially one that's causing the very problem that you're trying to solve. So hopefully that all makes sense. Now, as far as treatment, um, we look at, as I said, the root causes and what's, what's the cause of dysbiosis? What's the cause of those imbalanced bacteria? Certainly diet comes into play. Uh, certainly um, inflammation comes into play as for also toxins. People can have mold toxicity, heavy metal toxicity. They can have nutritional imbalances. Um, these things are all just identified individually to see what the root cause is for you. And then the treatment is a natural one, but it's a, it's a progression. It, it's not a, here's your pill, you know, it's, it's actually unraveling this problem, which doesn't have to take very long and it's natural, but it gets the job done. So I really wanted to bring your attention to this. The research articles are going to be listed in the description. So you know where this data is coming from. And there's, there's a lot of good news here uh, as far as how to move forward and, and really feel so much better and uh, not be at risk of, of this imbalance not only worsening your gut and causing hiatal hernia, but all those other diseases I mentioned, because that's what dysbiosis does. So I hope you found this informative. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like, um, and subscribe to the channel. That helps more people uh, see this information. And please send me a comment. I love your comments. I answer pretty much all of them. And we'll talk soon.